Hello friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kristen Shane. I am a full-time law student and I run an Etsy business as my side hustle and my passion, my dream job. And today I will be showing you how I pack my Etsy orders for my small business. It's gonna be kind of a long video, I'm sure, and I really go into as much detail and depth as possible to answer some of the questions I've received from my Etsy videos previously and to really just show you exactly step-by-step -step how I do everything. If you're curious about how to ship orders from Etsy or if you just wanna see how I do this process, I've been selling on Etsy for three years. Definitely wasn't perfect when I started, by no means perfect now, but you kind of learn as you go. So I hope to share some of the tips I've learned for you in this video. I have a playlist of other Etsy videos I've done in the past if you want to check those out as well. And now let's pack some orders. So when I go to print out orders, I log on to my Etsy dashboard. And then on this left hand side over here, I click on orders and shipping. And I have this planner covering my screen because all of this information and the orders contains personal information for my customers, which obviously I will not be showing. So that's why I have this book on my computer, but I get a lot of questions about the actual Etsy dashboard and basically all things and screens that I would need to show you that involve personal information. So once I click on orders and shipping, I can view all my open orders here as well as completed and past orders and all of the tracking information for those orders. So I have five orders today, which I will be shipping all of them for this video. And once I'm ready to ship them, I click here so I can select all, which is five. And then I will click this button to get shipping labels directly from Etsy. And from this process, I can buy the shipping labels from Etsy, choose the correct shipping package size and package weight, and then I can print out the order receipts and the shipping labels that I will print at home to put in the packages and the shipping labels to attach to the packages. I know this looks silly with two books covering my computer, but again, I am trying to show you as much as possible without leaking any private information. So I clicked on the get shipping labels and it brings me to this page on this left side that's covered is all of the open orders, all five. So it'll have the customer name for each order and you can select to add shipping labels for each one individually. And then on this right side in a column over here, it shows the customer's name and address. So if I'm packing orders, let's say at 11 p.m. one night, which is how I used to do all of my orders, I would select the next day for the buyer to be notified because obviously if I'm printing them at 11 p.m., that order will not actually be shipped and received by the post office until the next day. Today is Tuesday and these will be accepted at the post office today. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. I just wanna be able to show you this. And then under there, you can add a note to the buyer that will be sent automatically by Etsy. I have a pre-made note that goes to all of my customers that includes a coupon. So back to my little covered setup here so I can just show you this middle portion. I have a bunch of label presets for all of the packages and items I used most frequently. This makes the shipping process super easy and streamlined. And obviously you won't have this at the very beginning, but it's really helpful to add over time. I won't be going into that too much now, but these are the presets I have for all the standard packages and sizes I use. And then from there, the only thing I really have to change is the type of shipping if they order priority or the weight of the package. So for example, face masks have been really popular lately and this is the standard size that I use. It's a 10 by 13 poly envelope and this is my standard settings. Four ounces I've basically found is the minimum weight. It won't be any cheaper under four ounces so I just use that as a minimum because most of the face mask packages are under four ounces. But if a customer orders, let's say, five or more face masks, I will either weigh it or just increase this ounces by the amount of the actual package of those additional masks. And if I change this to, let's say, seven ounces, the price shows that adjustment as well. And you do get a discount from buying the postage directly through Etsy 
compared to if you were buying it at the post office because this is like the business rate or the non-commercial rate that is not inflated so this is kind of the uh, cheapest price available for shipping which is why I like to do it through Etsy and it's very convenient. But this item is actually for two small art prints and one face mask, which again, I'm not showing you, it's under here, but I'd be able to see exactly what this order is for. But for this one, I will be using a smaller nine by six inch poly mailer. And you can see that right here. I've selected package thick envelope from this drop down, nine inches by six inches by one inch. And then again, four ounces as that minimum weight and that will be good for this order. I went ahead and selected the next order to create the tracking info for. So this one is for a five by seven art print. So I click my label presets and if I didn't have the presets, I would just type the information in for the package I'm using. This one is a five by seven rigid mailer, which I believe is, yes, this one right here that I just named small print mailer. So you can see it fills with the standard info again and then over here I will just click the next order to move on. Bear with me for the angles. I'm just trying to keep this as safe as possible. So I've selected all the right info for my five labels and then at the bottom of the screen I will click review your purchase and it brings me to this page which just shows me the total of the cost of those five labels that I will be purchasing. And then this will just be taken directly from my Etsy account. And then I will just click purchase here. Sorry again for the shaky camera. I just had coffee and this is too close to my computer for me to use the tripod right now, but we're almost done, promise. So then from here, this little pop-up that pops up directly after I click accept and print those labels is how I print all my orders and it's easiest to do it directly from this pop-up. So the first thing I will do is click print shipping labels and this will open a PDF of my shipping labels and the default is two labels per page, which is fine for me because I resize them myself. So I just need to open them. So I'll click this. And now those shipping labels are open in this new tab right here. Next, I will go to print packing slips, but here I actually want to customize this and click unselect order receipts, I mean, so that I'm only printing the packing slips, which are, as it says here, designated for buyers. I don't need personal printed receipts because I can access the receipts of the order electronically. And then I will just select done. And again, you can see here, no open orders as those five orders are open in my browser. For the order receipts, I just clicked print right from the browser right here. And then I choose to do two pages per sheet because most of them are for one item or two items. So I really don't need a whole page for each one. And then I just cut the page in half to save a little paper and then click print on these ones. There isn't a great way for me to show you how I print the shipping labels because showing that page would show all the customer's addresses, but I will show you the paper that I have started using. And this has been the best thing for me to use. And here's one that I just have one left so you can kind of better see the size. Um, it's just sticker label paper. These have worked great for me. I've been using these for about six months now and I usually do not have to tape them over to the package. This stickiness is just enough by itself, especially on those kind of like shiny poly envelopes that I'll be using. But I just print these six to a page and then if it's not evenly divided by six, I'll have some left over and I can use these as well. I will also include the link for these down below just for the specific ones I use. I've had no problem with these so far, just besides standard user error, but I do like these because they are a little smaller as I have some smaller sized envelopes and packages. And then these are also just super easy to use and cut out a lot of the packing tape. Here is my printer. These are the five order labels that will go or order receipts that will go inside the packages. I just flipped them over so it's all hidden. And then I just use this label paper into the back of my printer. So it has this um, like back load paper feeder thing. So I just use this, sorry, I'm doing this with my left hand. And then I have it set to be 
letter paper and then cardstock setting I found works best and just say yes and then I will print out the shipping labels on this paper and I just be sure to select the rear paper feeder when I go to print them so that it prints on this instead of from the main just printer paper slot. I'm sure someone will ask so I'll just cover it now how I print the labels to fit exactly onto that label paper. I'm in Microsoft Word and then from this little top of the tabs you just go to mailings, the ma tab that says mailings, labels here on the left and then there are a bunch of preset label sizes that you can find. But if you're going to use the same paper I'm using, it's this 5264 shipping labels that it shows you right there. 5264 shipping labels for this paper. And then select full page of the same label. Select OK. And then it brings you to a page with these six labels that fits the label paper I'm using. In short, the method that I use is I screenshot each label, click and drag it into these boxes to make it the proper size. There might be a better way. That's just what works for me to get them to fit into these labels. Then I put each label onto each individual square and print it out. Next, I'm going to be writing thank you notes for each of my customers to go in their package. This is something I've always wanted to do since the beginning of my store and something I will try to do for as long as I can. A lot of people don't take the time to do this as it is an extra step, more work and more time consuming. But for me, it's really important to make my orders as custom as possible. And I really like writing handwritten notes. I think it's kind of a lost art. So I made these little postcards. I could do a tutorial on making something like this. I made these myself and I just print them on postcard paper on my printer. So it's nice cardstock. And then I just made this little graphic myself to match my logo with my website, my Instagram, and just thank you again. And then I just write a custom note with the customer's name on this right side. And then also here I have the order receipts cut in half, again flipped over for privacy. And this is the page of shipping labels, again flipped over, but I'm just going to go ahead and write my thank you notes. The next step was for me to print out all the art prints for the orders today. I have a variety of items on my shop, but art prints are some of my best sellers and I package all of my greeting cards in a similar way. So I just thought I would include this bit here for how I package these. I package all of my art prints and greeting cards into these clear cello sleeves for adding a layer of waterproofing to my packages. And unfortunately, this is not a very eco-friendly way to package orders. And I hope as my shop grows, I can eventually replace these for a more eco-friendly option. But this is important for me right now since they are paper art prints to make sure they get to my customers without water damage from the package because you never know what could happen some of these packages have a long way to go. Again, I can link the sets of cello sleeves that I use if that makes it easier for you as I've done my research and used these for quite a while now. And then they just have a little self sticky thing on here. This one was already sealed. And then I'll show you how I package these. These two four by six prints are in one order today. So I will put them in this little four by six sleeve. And I try to put them with the art prints facing out so that when you fold over the sticky bit, it goes on the back. So there's that. And then I have two 8x10 prints. This is probably my most popular size. And these go in these 8x10 cello sleeves here. Again, with the art print facing up so that the sticky part will be on the back and then I also I'll show you when I go to package them but I just slide the order label and the thank you card into the back of these so that they will also be waterproofed and I just put them in the back facing out so if you were looking at it on this side you can see the order receipt and the thank you card and then this side will be the art print. I went ahead and gathered 
my shipping envelopes, the face masks for today, and these rigid mailers for the art prints, as well as the stickers I use for shipping. I also made these little labels myself, just on regular address sticky labels. I used to print them in red, which I feel like is more effective, but when I printed these, my printer was low on ink, so bear with me. I haven't had any complaints of customers having damaged prints since using these sturdy, rigid mailers. I use them in three sizes actually, but this is the five by seven size, the eight by 10 size, and I have one for my certain 11 by 14 prints. Again, I will try to link everything down below to be as helpful as possible. For the five by seven prints, four by six prints, or greeting cards, depending on the number of cards they order, I take one do not bend label and stick it right on the bottom here. And then I even made a fake little shipping envelope or shipping label, I mean, to show you it without doxing anyone. So then I would just stick that on the front there, which I will do in a moment, but I'll put all these stickers on first. And then the little shipping label will go here. And then I usually stick one of these lemon and lily stickers. These are round, also made this myself printed on these round labels. And I will either stick one of these on the back, just like that, or on the front since these are a little larger. And then for the eight by 10, rigid mailers i'll put one do not bend sticker on the front one in the middle on the back like so and then i usually like to stick one of these on the front somewhere again the little shipping label will go right in the middle just add some extra color and branding and make it a little more custom and I will do that for both of these. Again, this is an extra step, but I try to be as careful with my art prints and greeting cards as possible, just to give them the best chance at arriving properly to their customer without being bent and ruined in any way and without any water damage. But you can just do what works for you and figure out what works best for your shop over time. Now that these are all prepped, the next thing I like to do is take all of my shipping labels and stick them to all their packages. Usually I'll do this all at once. Like when I've been shipping face masks, I'm mainly always using these larger lemon envelopes, which I think are so dang cute. And in my order reviews, I get a lot of customers complimenting me on my packaging, as well as just previous customers and evil even people who have messaged me on Instagram or posted their products or their orders on Instagram. I hear a lot of good things about my packaging, so I try to make it as cute and personable as possible. So I like these, and then I'll stick all of the envelope or all the labels, sorry, onto the front. But since I have a few different sizes today, I think I will do the sticker labels one at a time, just in the order of my packages. So the first order I will be packing is for these four by six art prints and one face mask. And this is a bit of a hybrid, so I'm gonna be putting it in this smaller lemon mailer here. I'm going to take my shipping label, stick it right to the front. Again, I'm just gonna use my little cheaty cover here so that you can't see it, but as you can see around those edges, it's stuck right on underneath my little <laughs> fake label. And since this includes art prints and a mask, it's kind of a special order, but for my face masks, I take one sheet of tissue paper, try to be as not crinkly as possible. And then I put the face mask like this, tuck the ear loops underneath. And then I made these little face mask care cards that just give tips for washing them so that they don't shrink or get ruined in the wash. And I just fold this up. And then use one little piece of tape to keep it secure. And I did find that one mask actually does fit into this smaller lemon mailer although I usually use these larger ones because they're actually about the same price. And then if I have orders with more than one mask, they will all fit in here. But just for showing you 
different things today. I'm gonna use this. And usually for art prints, I use the rigid mailers, but since this is a combination, I'm going to be using the poly mailer and a piece of cardboard just to keep the art prints stiff. Again, to give them the best chance at not being bent to their customer. I already put the thank you note in with the mask. I'll just take the customer's receipt and fold it and that will go in the package. Take the sticky piece off the back, secure that down. You could also put a little logo or thank you sticker right on the back of that. And since this envelope is small enough, this won't really budge anywhere. I'm gonna put the art print on top of the cardboard thank you note, or not the thank you note, the order receipt, then the face mask and one nice little stack. Put it in here. And that fits nice and snug in this envelope. These poly envelopes are the my favorites that I found. I've tried a few, all with kind of a citrus design, but these are my favorites by far. And the sticky part is super sticky. I don't have to worry about it coming back off or taping over it or anything. So I just tape that down, press it and make sure it's really secure and there's one order done. Obviously I'm going a lot slower because I'm showing you everything, but I do want to be as detailed as possible so you can see every step of the process and kind of why I do what I do. So next is this five by seven print. We're gonna take this, put the shipping label front, again, covering it for privacy, but it sticks right on. And then I will just take the art print. I double triple check every order to make sure I'm putting the right item with the right customer, with the right shipping label, with the right thank you card. So far, as far as I know, I've never gotten one wrong or I've caught it before I've sent it out. Put this on the back like so and I like to turn it so that when the customer opens the envelope, the art print will be facing out. Again, this is the same way I would ship greeting cards in these small rigid mailers. Again, I have found these rigid mailers to be very high quality, durable, and sticky. I just press it a few times just to make sure. Next is this eight by 10 print. So we'll be using the larger rigid envelope. Then I will flip the art print over and this one is still open. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the receipt. I usually wouldn't fold it since it fits in there, but again, I'm just hiding all that info. Again, this is where I will double check to make sure all the names and the item match. And then I just slide that receipt and thank you card in here and seal it shut. Now that's all in there. Turn it upright in the envelope. And I don't need to add cardboard to these as to my experience, they stay nice and rigid. Fold that shut, make sure it's nice and secure. And these are also nice because they have this little pull tab that when you wanna open it, you can just rip this off so you don't have to take off the sticky or use scissors or anything. So that's really nice. One more eight by 10 print. Again, using my little fake <laughs> cover up shipping label to just stick that on. I make sure all the corners of the shipping label are nice and stuck so that they don't get caught on anything. Get the art print, flip that over, order receipt, fold it in half. I also heard a tip from some other Etsy sellers to include that order receipt, even though it's one additional step to print and one more thing that the customer will just throw away. But I have heard that it's good to include that, especially depending on how long your processing time is and how long it actually takes to arrive to the customer. We all like to do online shopping, but sometimes you do get a package in the mail and sort of forget what it is. So it's nice to have that reminder for the customer to remember exactly what they ordered and to be able to check double check that order from themselves. So when they open it, they can say, oh yeah, I did order this art print from Lemon and Lily Co on Etsy and the art print is what I received. So one, to remind them what they ordered. Two, they can double check that their order is correct. And in fact, what they ordered. And three, you can include any personal info, like a thank you note or a coupon on that. You get a receipt when you buy something from an online store or in store. So it's just that extra level of officialness for your online orders. And finally, one more little face mask to go to a new home. And this is how I ship all my masks, regardless of how many the customer gets. 
take it, tuck in the little ear loop, double check that it's correct and that I've included all the face masks they ordered and fold it up like a little present. One more shipping label. And these lemon envelopes, I don't stick any additional stickers onto like the rigid mailers since they already are cute and branded to my store. Flip it over, face mask in, and then just secure the self adhesive onto the back. Got my five orders all ready to drop off at the post office. I'm so glad you're here. Again, thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I will leave as many links below as I can for things I mentioned and showed in this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on Etsy tips and tricks and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your small business. Until I see you again, be nice to people, be nice to yourself, and do something kind today. See ya.